Time now for Patel It Like It Is, where Dr. Alok Patel shares some health advice on the topics that matter most to you. Today we're talking about spring allergies. Here's Dr. Patel with more. Spring is in the air. And so is grass pollen and mold at an inflammation party in my nose. Because like millions of Americans, I suffer from seasonal allergies or allergic rhinitis, hay fever, annoying nose disease, whatever you want to call it. You know what I'm talking about, the red itchy eyes, coughing headaches, none of it is fun. But anyway, now that spring has sprung, let's bring into a conversation about seasonal allergies. First, some scientific nerdiness. Allergies are essentially your immune system overreacting to something that's seemingly normal, like pollen, and treating it like a dangerous invader. And when I said millions of people are affected, I meant it. According to the American College of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology, around 50 million Americans suffer from allergies. And this brings up a healthcare price tag of $18 billion per year. Prevention is key. Look up daily pollen and mold counts. Weather, location, even time of day can affect those numbers. And if you know what your triggers are and counts are high, you may want to reconsider your nature walk. Or if you have to do something like mow the lawn or garden, you could also wear an N95. And protect your home. During allergy season, it's a good idea to keep windows shut. Home air purifiers with HEPA filters can also help, as can HVAC systems. But allergens can also hitch a ride on you. So when you come home, change your clothes, wash your hair, wash your dogs, or keep them out of the bedroom. Also, this is even my dog, I borrowed it, but isn't he cute? Or try out my personal favorite, sinus irrigation. Oh, my beloved neti pot. Just make sure you use distilled or sterile water. Over-the-counter medications like antihistamines, decongestions, anti-allergy eye drops, nasal sprays can also help. In general, these meds are safe to try. Just make sure you carefully read the instructions, and if you need any guidance, you chat with a doctor. Speaking of doctors, if your symptoms really get out of hand, you want to see a doctor, specifically a board-certified allergist, who can help with symptom management, recommend new medications, or even perform a skin or blood test to identify specific allergens. See, my fellow spring butterflies, even with all the tree pollen like elm and hickory and all the grass, like Bermuda and Kentucky blue in the air, you can stay one step ahead of seasonal allergies or annoying nose disease. And Dr. Patel, Alok Patel joins me live now to tell it like it is. Dr. Patel, the symptoms are so similar. So how can you tell if it's allergies or a cold? Diane, they are very similar. And listen, I'm not trying to method act right now, but I have burning itchy eyes because I legitimately have seasonal allergies. What it basically comes down to is a certain kind of checklist that you can ask yourself to figure out if you have allergies or a cold. One of the first things is a fever. Allergies are generally not gonna cause a fever. They're also not gonna cause body aches like we can see with the cold COVID-19 or the flu. A sore throat, this is different than that scratchy tickling throat like the one I have. A sore throat is usually more than an infection and also Diane, timing of symptoms is really important. If you People have symptoms lasting for about a week or two consistently. That is more consistent with an infection, whereas with allergies, it's more related to the time that you're exposed to the allergens, which is sometimes those symptoms can improve when you go indoors. And this can obviously help people with things like medication management, expecting when your symptoms will go away, and also knowing when to stay away from other people. So what can you do about this? Sometimes you hear about allergy tests or shots. Uh, when is it time to look into those and, and what are the options? Well, the biggest thing to know is when you stop being able to manage allergies on your own with over-the-counter medications or when it starts to really mess with your daily quality of life, it's time to see an allergist if you can. I mentioned the fact that some people have allergies that are so bad, they literally can't function. They can't do their daily tasks without having symptoms. Also, if your symptoms are lasting for several months out of a year, if you have worsening underlying symptoms such as asthma or you're getting chronic sinus infections, really bad symptoms, or like I mentioned, if those medications you're buying at the drugstore no longer work, it's a good idea to try to see an allergist. Allergists generally can, can do two things, one of which is allergy testing. So testing for a range of different allergens, even beyond seasonal allergens, testing for things like latex, different food allergies, or venom, or allergy testing, or I'm sorry, allergy shots which is immunotherapy, Diane, which is almost analogous to a vaccine where you're building up your immune system's tolerance over time to a specific allergen. And one cautionary note out there, there are a lot of allergy tests you can buy over the internet. These are not always accurate. You can get false positives, false negatives. So be wary of anything you see advertised and when in doubt, chat with a doctor about those tests and what your best options are. This feels like a major design flaw that we, our body thinks it's appropriate to attack something that is around us every day and is actually harmless in and of itself. So 
Is there sort of a big picture explanation for why that is and why they seem to be getting worse? You know, I wish there was a clear-cut big picture explanation. There are some evolutionary biologists out there who have theories, Diane, but you're absolutely right. Our immune systems are overreacting in some degree to many of the, the things out there in the environment. And one thing we have to pay attention to is climate change, which is actually worsening all of this. So there are some reports out there, for example, showing that as our planet gets warmer, the allergy season is getting longer. In some parts of the country, the pollen season is actually extending by up to three weeks. More allergens with more pollution and more CO2 levels also has an interaction that's terrible for our bodies. And as certain areas get warmer, what are plants going to do? They're going to migrate. So all of this put together with what you just mentioned, that we had this design flaw, if you will, means that we have to really start paying attention to not only global warming for a host of health reasons, but also how this is affecting our everyday life, as is the case with allergies, which affects 50 million or more Americans, not to mention countless people worldwide. All right, Dr. Patel, we appreciate it as always. And remember, Dr. Patel is taking your questions. So if you've got one, leave a message on our Instagram feed. He just might answer it right here on Friday. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.